if few people know as much about concrete as this gentleman, he is, uh, I'm going to ask the, the Snells to stand up. Luke and Billy Snell are with us this morning. They have traveled all around the world. He is a, is a professor uh, dealing with that issue. He's a professional engineer, and he is a, a retired professor, but he's still working. He's still doing, using the technology. He's doing coursework around the world. And he'll tell you more when we, when we introduce the guests, but they, they live at Legacy Village, and they've come to visit this morning. I hope they come back again. I hope you find this to be something that, that uh, is, is uh, uh, spiritually uplifting and, and beneficial to you, but it's certainly good to see you this morning. I want to share as well, I got a phone call this morning, as you know, in the last few weeks, there are those that have been joining us from far and wide beyond the confines of Dayton, Ohio, and, and the Miami Valley. I got a phone call this morning from someone who is now in his 40s, but I first encountered him when he was truly out in the wilderness. He was about 19 years old, and he was unsheltered and hadn't had a lot to eat, and he was a troubled young man on the mean streets of Oakland, California. And I met him uh, through another young person that I had been working with, and he introduced himself one evening on those streets. He said, call me Savage. I said, young man, I'm not going to call you Savage. What is your name? <laughs> I'm only going to call you your name. Now, if your last name is Savage, I'll call you that, but that's not your last name. His name is Ronald Jones. He is watching us right now from Houston, Texas. And so College Hill Reach has gone far beyond <laughs> this corner. Uh, he is a, a, a young man that had the opportunity uh, to come and live in this area. Uh, my wife and I had a house over in Xenia some years ago, about 25 years ago. He went and, and lived in Xenia for a while. Uh, before going back to California and then ultimately to Texas. But he is a young man that has pulled it together. He has been in church with me on a number of occasions. And one of which I just, just thought of, I'll give you something to laugh at before we go into worship. He accompanied me to two funerals on one day. Now the first funeral was for a young person who had been a, a victim of street violence. Now, if you've ever been to those funerals, you know that the way they do it is the kids go out and they self-medicate before they go to the funeral. So the smell of the herb was in the air at the funeral home. But the smell was also on the young people. And the young people came and embraced, and, and embraced me so that on our way to the next funeral, I had that smell too. <laughs> and I reeked of that smell. And Ronald was sitting next to me and he said, well, where are we going now? And I said, we're going to the funeral for a, a probation officer who had died. And he said, well, Rev, make sure when we get there, you sit way on the other side of the room <laughs> because you're going to have a problem <laughs> because you smell just like the <laughs> so." We did that, we, probation staff was on this side of the room in a large church, and I was on way on this side of the room, and when we left, I mean, I had to shake hands with the people, and I shook hands at a distance like this, so that, and they were saying, the, the chaplain smells like, so anyhow, Ronald Jones is with us this morning, and I want to welcome him. And uh, I want to, uh, to say again, I'm sorry I wasn't with you the other day. But this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are, and we are, amen. Friends, let us now join in the call to worship printed on the, on the screen. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let the gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Lord, with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us worship God. Friends, we've just said we're going to be coming into the Lord's house with singing. So let us do that. There is no greater privilege than to sing the power of the Lord's name. So let's turn to page 142 in your dark blue hymnals if you need to know the music. Let's all stand in body or in spirit as you are able. Let's sing all hail the power of Jesus' name. I invite you to say I invite you to say together with me our shared gathered in prayer. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Together. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Let the heavens praise you, one, O Lord. Your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? We affirm, we affirm that the Lord of heaven is among us as we worship together today. Amen. A prayer of confession. Time and time again, God's people have refused to obey God's commandments and have not been mindful of the wonders that God has performed among them. Instead, they stiffened their necks and determined to return to their slavery in Egypt. So it is even with us today. Hear, O oh Lord, the plea of your servants, as you did for your people Israel, when they prayed toward for the pit. May you hear your heaven, your dwelling place. Hear and forgive, we pray. Believe these words that strengthen us. Our God is ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, 
and abounding in steadfast love. God does not forsake God's people. Thanks be to God. Something that happens in many Christian churches is at this point, the churches sing something called the Gloria Patri, Glory Be to the Father. That hasn't been our tradition here, but we're going to start that today, and we're going to sing uh, several different Gloria Patris in different services. Today we're going to uh, sing one that was very, um, very common back in the 1970s by uh, an outfit called Avery and Marsh. It's one of the Gloria Patris. I like it because it's got a little jazz to it, so we are going to sing now this Gloria Patri. Stephen will play uh, a very brief introduction, and I will lead you in singing it. You may stand if you would like to for this one. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. As a multicultural church, we offer a special greeting to all who join us in our worship and praise of the Lord. Each of us has a special place in this community of faith. Welcome to the joyful. We rejoice with you. Welcome to the tired and weary. Come and take your rest. Welcome to the lonely and left out. May you find community here. Buenos días. Como iglesia multicultural, Ofrecemos una bienvenida especial a todos los que comparten con nosotros este servicio de alabanza. Cada uno tiene un puesto especial en esta comunidad de fe. Sean bienvenidos todos los que están gozosos. Nos regocijamos con ustedes. Sean bienvenidos los que están cansados. Vengan y descansen en Dios. Sean bienvenidos los que se sienten solitarios y abandonados. Que se sientan acompañados y como parte de una comunidad entre nosotros. Welcome to the foreigner, to the stranger, to the refugee. May you find safety here. Welcome to every nation, every race, every orientation, and every identity. May you find hospitality here. For the God who delights in all creation is in our midst. Praise God. Sean bienvenidos los extranjeros, los refugiados, que encuentren seguridad aquí en ese lugar. Sean bienvenidos los que llegan de cualquier nación, raza, orientación, identidad. Que puedan sentir nuestra hospitalidad, porque el Dios que se deleita en toda su creación está entre nosotros. All the children of the multicultural family of faith, which welcomes diversity in our worship, in our ministry, and in all the world. We hope you find something in our prayers and praise, in our music or ministry, that makes you feel a part of our family and most of all, of God's family. All are welcome here. College Hill is a family multicultural of faith that accepts the diversity in our adoration, in our ministry, and in the whole world. We hope that you find something in our orations and praises, in our music or ministry, that you make you feel part of our family and, above all, of the family of God. All are welcome and welcome. Now, we welcome our first, uh, first time visitors. If there's any, we invite those who are worshiping with us for the first time or who are back from uh, with us after a long time away to share your names with us so we can welcome you. Larry has a speaker here. If somebody would like to stand up for first time visitors, visitors or if you feel like it's been a while, you're welcome. I know you folks would like to say something perhaps to us. Glad to join you today, uh, Luke and Billy Snell. We live in Xenia, Ohio. We, I was a professor at uh, Southern Illinois University 
uh, right outside of St. Louis for many years, and now uh, in our retirement, we are we moved to Xenia to be closer to our family. So nice to join you today. Thank you. Welcome. Great to have you with us, both of you. Would you like to say something? I have because he's my husband and I love him and God keeps with this man. I love him. He's my Thank husband. You. Thank you. Amen. Amen to that. Yes. Are there any new folks from Mary Scott who are with us today? Okay. Same crew. Always welcome. Great. Okay. I see fingers pointing. Hi, my name is Trinity Thomas. Happy to be here. Um, Are you a friend of this family? Yes, I this am. Family? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stuart Garner. I'm here visiting family. Celebrate a wonderful birthday here. And uh, glad to worship with you today. So what's this about a birthday? Hmm? 80. Uh, all right. Well, did you enjoy this, the trumpet serenade that you heard for your birthday? Good. Good for you all. Congratulations. Lovely. Anyone else who's new with us or back after a while away? All right. Yeah, Nelson. Little Nelson. Yes. Oh. Well, I am here to visit again. This is like the second time um, that I've been here um, just visiting. Um, my name is Alexis, and I have recently learned that the Bible is true and that no matter what our circumstances are, um, that we have God in our lives and that it has strengthened our us and Mary Scott is we do Bible studies every week and that has lifted all of our souls and lifted everything about us. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. You have written their prayer request on the sheet in the pews. Uh, to hand those to the usher who will be coming down the center uh, to collect them. Uh, we ask that you stand in body. Let's, we ask you all to stand in body or in spirit and say to each other, the peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. And in Spanish. Los, los mujeres van a recoger la petición escritas de oración en este momento. I do want to say I'm going to be briefer than I probably would have been because like you on Wednesday, I opened my eyes up and they went in every direction. I was falling left and falling right, so there was not as much reading as I would like to have done to share with you today. But I do have a few things to say. I uh, have a brief video that we're going to look at to help you see some of the things that our church is doing. We come to church on a Sunday and we have fellowship together and we love each other, but we aren't always aware of all our church is really doing. And the more we know about it, the better we can benefit our church and each other. 
you know I have to start with the women. That's always my favorite part. Um, did you know, you know Katherine Johnson, the woman that was in the story of Hidden Figures? Presbyterian woman. And there's another woman. She's not a Presbyterian. I can't claim her that way. But her name is Clarabelle Williams. And this woman was so amazing. She was born in Texas and moved to New Mexico. She was the first black woman allowed to go into the school. And while they allowed her to go into school, the professors in a lot of cases wouldn't allow her in the room. She had to stand outside in the hall to get her notes through the door. And she persisted, she graduated, and they did not let her march because no one wanted to walk behind her or in front of her. But this woman lived to be 108 years old. She raised three sons who became doctors. So there is much to be proud of when we look at our heritage and that we share that heritage. Another woman, and this was a Presbyterian woman named Laney, and it wasn't any easier for her. This woman was born uh, during slavery. Her parents had bought their freedom 20 years before she was born, so she was not born a slave. And by the time this girl was 10 years old, she could read, she could write, and could interpret Latin. She went into school very, very early and became an elder of the Presbyterian Church. She established a school, and that school is still standing. She went to the General Assembly to try to get money for the school, and they gave her enough money to get back home, but they didn't do anything else. But there was a woman there, a white woman, who saw what she was doing was the right thing to do and became her lifelong benefactor. They built a school in this woman's name. Her name was Haynes. And that school is still standing. The campus has expanded, even to include schools of nursing now. So we have a lot to be proud of and a lot to share. And it's this church that represents and why we get so much support from the Presbytery because we are a black, a white, Hispanic, we were Korean. This is everybody's church. And we all have much to be proud of. <laughs> and in saying that, we are a Matthew 25 church. We made that commitment in 2019. And then we got lots of surprises. COVID came and just kicked everybody, you know what? changed the structure of the church, the fact that we had gotten this audio-visual system in before COVID, before we had any idea that the church made the commitment to spend the money to do this because we wanted people who were at home to be able to take part in the service, benefited us in ways we didn't have any understanding of. But we still are not able to completely fulfill that Matthew 25 promise. We're doing better. We're growing stronger. Susie has connected us with the church that has another option for Matthew 25. While we have the pastries now, I can't believe how much we got this week. We got so much pastry now that I need a man to volunteer for Saturday night because I can't do all this organ anymore. It was unbelievable. I had three bags of bread and three bags of pastries. So please come downstairs. Visitors, everyone come and get pastries because that's part of our service. And hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll have paper products that we'll be able to give out also. We're working for that. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit because I want to make the point. The three focuses of Matthew 25 Church, building congregational vitality by challenging people and congregations to deepen their faith and get actively and joyfully engaged with their community and the world. And we have been luckily been able to once again work with Mary Scott. And the response we've gotten has been wonderful. We've got new people coming to church. We've got members of Mary Scott's that, for whatever reason, found themselves in difficult situations, and they have felt welcome to come to church with us now. Part two, dismantling systemic poverty by working to change laws, policies, plans, and structures in our society that perpetuate economic exploitation of people who are poor. Our social justice group, is a powerful group. We are very few in number now. I invite you to come. It's an hour once a month. Well, I'll usually stand talks more than that. So maybe it's two hours once a month. 
but we're doing <laughs> we're doing things that are important because this is the same group that when the Dayton Mall opened up, they did not want disabled people coming through the front door. They had a back door for them to go to. We know about back doors. And this church said no, and Leeds said no, and a number of groups in this community fought together. So that was overcome, and there is a film out on that. I think PBS shows that film every now and then. Third point, eradicating structural racism by advocating and acting to break down the system. Go to city commission meetings, go to county commission meetings. We have to be there to know what they're doing. Practices and thinking that underlie discrimination, bias, prejudice, and oppression of people of color. Now, the, the point is that our individual congregations make the statements. But even though we think people don't see us, when we had the vote on the schism, and that was a bad weather day, over about 100 people showed up for us to vote on that. So remember, these people see what we're doing. They are supporting what we're doing, and we want more churches to be able, churches to, be able to do this as well. So hold on. We keep going. Our church is getting back to normal. I'm grateful that so many people are here. Now I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about something I want. Uh, can you play the video for me now? You didn't? Oh, okay. Jose tried to send it, I know. This is about a young man who is in charge of one of our missions. And if you go to the Presbyterian page, and I'm guilty of it, I had been a Presbyterian in church, knew I wanted to be a Presbyterian because of philosophy, but not knowing all the church was doing. And if you go into our Miami Presbyterian page, if you go to the Presbyterian of USA, you will see the many missions that we have. One I found just the other day is there's actually a mission to help with student loan relief. There are so many things there, but this is about reparations. That word just sends you know, everybody into some kind of state of emotion. Larry has been talking to me about reparations for two years. Cheryl, you need to do something. You need to talk about it. What are we going to do about it? And I'm just like, <laughs> that's a big subject. That's going to take all of us to try to figure out. But this young man, his name is Jeremiah Ross Alam. Uh, his mission began also in 2019. He's in Louisville, Kentucky, and hopefully we'll be able to get him to come and speak to us. But he has changed the sense of that by saying this is to correct and heal historical harms. It's a new way to say it. I'm sorry we don't have the video for you to be able to see. But the point is that now there is a group of about seven people who are working together. This has expanded out. So more churches are involved, and I hope that we will be able to get enough people to become more involved with that too. Because reparations, my point of view, the best approach to that is education. And the example I gave you of the woman standing outside the classroom to take notes is another prime example of how important it is to get the education. She grew up in a family that it was important. She married into a family that was important. When brothers and sisters graduated from college, they made sure the other siblings were going to graduate from college. They became a magnificent group. And in so many cases, we got people in broken families. And when I say broken, I don't mean single mother, head of household family. I mean broken families, economically, maybe spiritually. And in so many cases now, we are scattered as families all over the country. We're not in one community anymore. So we have to take care of each other. So I'm sorry we don't have the video for you to see, but do go on the website. Go to the Presbyterian website, Miami Valley Presbytery, and also Presbytery USA, and see what's happening. Uh, my last notes to you are just to remind us of the times where we began to feel good about feeling like we were black people. Because when I was growing up, if you call somebody black, it was going to be a fight. We have grown past that. We have grown past good hair and bad hair. We have grown past so many things that were there put in our heads to separate us. The word African. You know, the first Presbyterian church for black folks was the African Presbyterian Church of Philadelphia. And that was in 1807. We got history. 
so the fun things about us becoming, when you think about entertainment and not just, you know, the balls. We got basketball. We got football. But remembering the Negro League, what they went through and continued, some of the best players in the world. Then we grew into black fraternities, sororities, the NAACP. These were all things that began to give us, uh, began to give us a sense of our own strength, our own power. Then coming together a different way. We had juke joints. We had the halls, the Masonic halls, the halls where the families were able to get together, the dinner club. Fifth Street had, uh, had the Swats Club. It was a big deal to get old enough to be able to go down on Fifth Street to go to Swats and have your first drink at 21. Then we had the Globetrotters. Do you remember being a kid? Some of us are much older than some of others. But being able to see the Globetrotters making you feel good about being black and, and taking the music that we, and working that into, and seeing these magnificent men and now women doing this. The dance competitions. I don't know if you all know about dance competitions. Again, some of us are older, but the dance competitions were real all over the city. New Chicago and New York, Detroit, Cleveland. Those were important things. And step competitions with the colleges. Black cinema. We have to recognize black cinema because Dayton is still suffering from a lack of representation. When you look at the news, I get mad every single day when I look at the news here. So I limit it to the news at 12 because there's a black woman giving the news and there's a less, some representation there. We need to write. We need to fight about this. This is something, again, we can take on as a church and say you need to have representation there. Um, you know, Oscar Michelle. Most of us are not aware of his work. This, was, this man put together a history of black film in the very early days of film. And he didn't allow us just to be represented as thugs as we were or rapists as we were, but he showed us in our natural life and in relationship and having fun. So there's a, a, a brother that is with the um, African elders who has got a history of films that I'm hoping one day we'll be able to get him here to show his films also. But right now, there's a film on Netflix, I think it is. And I don't know what I think about it. It's a series. It's called Colin in Black and White. And Colin Kaepernick, am I saying it right? This is about him growing up in a white world, in a black world, the confusion he had but he's got a lot of attitudes. You know, this man's got a lot of attitudes. Because when he took a knee, he changed a lot of things in this country, including his future. But he stuck with it. We've got Spike Lee. We've got Lee Daniels, Tyler Perry, Anna DeVernas. So many people are putting films out now. And now the studios know, because once upon a time, they thought, well, we don't, we don't do those films. And we had the, the black exploitation. They say black exploitation films. But now they know where the money is, that we are not just there to go see those stories. We are also there to see our stories. So if you get a chance, um, and if you didn't see Usher at halftime, you missed it because it was good. He made some good points, and that made me think about it too. Roller skating, I don't know if you all were roller skaters. I cannot roller skate. But it was a big deal in our community. That was some of the best Saturdays people had. They looked forward to all week. But look at Bass Reeves on Paramount. We finally got the truth that the Lone Ranger was a black man. This is real. It's a series. Rustin is about the demonstrations, student demonstrations. That is out now also. Uh, the Light We Cannot See is actually about the Second World War. And it deals with a young woman who is blind and is actually played by a blind woman because those limitations are just as important as the color limitations. So do look at that film as well. And there's a Western, and that'll be my last statement, called Surrounded. And I think that's on Prime. I'm not sure if it's Netflix or Prime. I'll try to put a list together of things for you guys. But this is a Western. In our day, growing up, we saw Hopalong Cassidy and Roy Rogers. And so we grew up on Westerns, so a lot of us still love the Westerns. But 
remember, we are doing this together. We are here in church together. We know what we believe, that the only way that God is truly represented is if we are loving each other. God, source of all light, by your word, you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that our hearts and minds may be open to know your truths and your way. Amen. Today's gospel is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came out of Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well, well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Some years ago, church, I attended a funeral over in Fort Wayne. It was an apostolic Pentecostal church, and there were seven preachers, and they preached a long time. And at one point, I was sitting in the family section, and they, some of the ushers came up to me and said, Pastor, do you have something that you'd like to add? And I said, it's all been said. I don't have anything else to say. And, uh, and I feel somewhat that way now because it's all been said. We could go to benediction, but we're not going to. <laughs> I'm very pleased again, that we've had young people participate in the service this morning. As a matter of fact, a um, uh, young man, when it's time for the offertory, I'd like you to come forward and participate. Yes, you. Yes. 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 So I I'd like you to participate in that when we do that. Uh, I'd like you to hold the, the plates as, as, as your brother here does the prayer over the offer. Of the, the offertory prayer. A couple weeks ago, during Bible study, we talked about the use of the tool, the Bible. This is a this is an Oxford annotated Bible, and it's a study Bible. And one of the things that I talked about was the idea. Well, it was talked about in the in, in the in the during the discussion about the use of the footnotes. And we dealt with a text this morning that comes from the gospel according to Mark. But if you take a look at the footnote, it will send you in one of the other synoptic gospels to the gospel according to Matthew. And I want to read part of the Jesus' temptation because in Matthew and Luke, there's a little bit more about the wilderness experience. And that's what I want to focus on today, the 40 days in the wilderness, because we are in the Lenten period, in a 40-day period where we certainly focus on and commemorate the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness. And 
Mark says, well, it happened. And it leaves a lot to our imagination and our interpretation. And people that were being addressed at the time had a better, a little bit better understanding. And I'll talk about why in a minute. But in Matthew 4, verses 1 and following, the text tells us that then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted. Fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hand they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to the devil, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil took him to every high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, and he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. That came in the footnote of that Mark text. And then in the, the Luke text, Luke shares Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command the stone to become a loaf of bread. And it's very similar going on. And it ends with, Jesus said, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him. And this is the important part, until an opportune time. So I want to focus on this idea of Jesus in the wilderness. Passion of the Christ. Anybody see that movie? Remember Ruth? Anybody see that movie? I read the book of Ruth, and I've been reading the scripture about the gospel, about the life of Jesus Christ for a lifetime. So I didn't want to depend on Hollywood. I don't depend on Hollywood. I'm, I, I don't go to too many movies. But the thing that I, I want us to do once again is I want you to, if you want to close your eyes even, I want you to put your feet in Jesus' sandals. I want you to imagine that you're out there been baptized and now you're you're being tempted by the evil one and you're about to take a walk of 40 days something that you have been called to do you've been put here on this planet to do this and you are going out into that wilderness now the passion of Christ can only share with us what we can see maybe what we can hear but the thing that you don't get from those movies is the smells. You don't get the smells when you go to the surround sound. You don't get a surround smell. Can you imagine not eating for 40 days? Can, can, you, can you imagine being out there? One of the texts talks about being out there with wild beasts. 
Have you ever been around wild beasts? You know, it, it's hard for us to imagine some of the things that this Jesus went through on our behalf out there in the wilderness. Some of you who, have, who are, are veterans, you took survival training. Some of you who were in combat know what it is to be deprived. But how many of you have been out in the wilderness and the movie doesn't talk about the fact that we still have bodily needs. There's no bathrooms out there in the wilderness. So what you gonna do while you're doing that? So obviously there was some water, but Jesus didn't eat for 40 days. We got bread downstairs waiting for us. So imagine yourself out there in darkness half of the time. And the other time out there amongst the wild animals and not eating, and not being able to communicate with other people, and accept this, this, this evil spirit that comes upon you and seeks to test you, seeks to take advantage of your situation, one that's diminished by the fact that you haven't eaten. Can you imagine being in Jesus' position? Can you imagine... If, if we could do a movie about those 40 days and we could include all the, the feelings that Jesus must have had and, 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 and have the, the, the smells and the, and, and the wind and the rain and everything else that was going on during those 40 days. And as you imagine that, think about, focus on during this Lenten season, that the idea is to set aside some of the things, some of the distractions that get in our way as we seek to focus on what Jesus came to do for us, why Jesus was sent to us. Oftentimes, people think about, they talk about the Bible times. They talk about the people in the Bible times, and they they think about what the, what the uh, European Renaissance artists depicted, the characters in the Bible, walking around with halos on their head. These were earthy folks. These were folks that were dealing with the same kinds of issues that we deal with on, a, on an everyday basis. They were concerned about eating, and they were concerned about making a living. They were concerned about dealing with other folks. They were concerned about the, the, the powerful entities to their south and the powerful entities to their north and the powerful entities to the east. Things weren't peaches and cream at that time. Continue to imagine Jesus up there deprived of all of the things that we take for granted. How many had a meal today? If you haven't had one yet, how many are going to have a meal today? Do you know where you're going to take care of your bodily needs? You know that we function in a relative state of comfort in our endeavor. Jesus was out there by his lonesome in the wilderness. And guess what? It was on our behalf that he was there. It was on your behalf. It was on your behalf. It was on your behalf that Jesus was sent to be about the business of saving us even from ourselves. Sadly enough, there are people, as we focus on our journey in these next 40 days, Sadly enough, there are people right this moment 
who are in a similar situation that Jesus was in. They're out there in that wilderness that exists even today. They didn't have a meal this morning. They didn't take a shower this morning. They don't know where they're going to use the bathroom. There are folks out there that are walking in a virtual fog. Let us focus on our journey as we seek to reach out beyond ourselves to embrace those who are less fortunate than we are. As we continue our walk with Jesus towards Calvary, let us remember that yes, indeed, we are too often a Good Friday people and we forget the fact that Easter follows. That's the message we have to take out from this place to a hurt and hurting community that surrounds us. Let us focus in this Lenten season on that time that Jesus was without. But he said, repent and hear the good news because despite all of the things that we may have, don't, we don't have and we may not have, we do have the presence of Christ in our lives. And that's important. Have a challenge for you this week. Take a post-it, a little sheet of paper. For some of us, it may take a few more sheets of paper. And I want you to write down all those things that you want to get rid of during Lent. I'm not talking about, well, I'm going to give up this or I'm going to give up that. I'm talking about the real deep stuff, the sins, the apprehensions, the fears that we have that get in the way of our message. Beyond ourselves, beyond ourselves, not only as individuals, but as the church of Jesus Christ. What is it that we need to do to make this a better place to be in this world? Write those things down. It might take a legal pad. <laughs> but write it all down. If you have a shredder, shred it. Tear it up. Don't show it to anybody. It's between you and the Lord. Write it down. Put it in a bowl. Have a bottle of water nearby so it doesn't burn your house down. And set that on fire. Take those ashes. Throw them to the wind. All of our sins and fears and apprehensions get in our way. Get in our way, church. Jesus came to make a way out of no way. Let us focus on the great gift, the greatest gift that God has given us in Christ Jesus. So in our Lenten journey, let's set aside all of the distractions all those things that get in the way from our focus on that gift of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to walk the way we're supposed to walk, the one who taught us how to talk, the one that taught us how to be about the business of love and peace and joy. Despite what goes on around us, we know there's mess out there, but there was mess there during Bible times as well. And Jesus endured far more than we can even imagine. And he did it on our behalf. Thank God. And amen. Friends, when, when you're on your wilderness journey, when I'm on my wilderness journey, 
when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was on his wilderness journey, there were no words that were more powerful and important to affirm than, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am poor, I am weak, I am worn. Those are the words we're going to sing now in this beloved hymn, and I invite you to stand, turn to page 404 of your dark blue hymnal, and let's sing these words that mean so much to us. For our affirmation of faith, that faith that indeed God loved us so much that he gave his only son Jesus as a great gift to us, let us stand as we are able and affirm that faith as we read the Nicene Creed, as printed in your bulletin. Let us read together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Once again, we come to that time as we, particularly in this Lenten season, that we focus on that journey that Jesus began toward the cross on our behalf. And we ask that those who wish to have special prayers lifted up do so this time before we go before that throne of grace in humble and confident prayer. This is a confusion for me. Um, the man who opposed Putin, whose name I can't call up right now, died yesterday. This man was poisoned, escaped death, came here and in many places in Europe, but chose to go back to Russia, was almost immediately imprisoned, has been in Siberia for the last couple of years, and was interviewed in court the day before he died suddenly. I don't understand what kind of courage made somebody willingly go back into that situation to sacrifice his life. Is he going to be a martyr? Is this going to encourage? I pray for his family. I pray for Russia. Those people suffer terribly because they have a crazy leader who doesn't mind sacrificing them at all. So I pray for that family. Amen. Let me just say, as, as, as you mentioned that, there's a, um, a gentleman by the name of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who once he completed his, his graduate theological training, uh, we know that he was from Atlanta, he didn't have to go back south. There were churches here in Ohio that wanted him. There were churches throughout the north where his life would have been a lot less complicated, but he was committed to go back, and we know what happened to him as well. And so I understand where you're coming from, but that, that's certainly a, a, uh, an example of someone following their faith, uh, despite the danger, despite the fear, despite the, 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 uh, what he probably knew was going to happen in his life. So, amen. I suppose this will be my last visit to my spiritual alma mater. I have been here for 50 some years. My family, five daughters, was raised in this church. It has been a tremendous experience. Someone has suggested that it takes a whole village to raise a child. I am living proof of that. I had tremendous help from all of those that was a part of this church. Anyway, you pray for me, and I'll pray for you, and uh, God bless us all. I must say this, too. When I come back, should I come back, I would like to see all of these seats filled. Amen. Once upon a time, this church was known as the Hugginess Church. Stand up, Joyce. Once upon a time, this church was known as the Hugginess Church in all of Dayton. And I hope we will go back to that. Thank you. Somewhere that's, way that's, back there in the back. That's one of the things that, the, that COVID got in the way of. If you guys could pray for um, Mary Scott people, that would be amazing. Um, there's some people that are struggling mentally, physically, and they just need prayers that they that they know that they're loved and not alone. Um, I've experienced being alone in many different times. Um, I struggled with pe people passing away for the past two months, um, and it has been very hard on me, but I've noticed that Heavenly Father and God is always with me, and 
they are never alone because we have companions and we have friends that are there for each other. So if you guys could pray, especially for Frankie, that would be amazing. Amen. What I have to say, I must follow behind that there. You know, our heart goes out to Mary Scott, and we're going to continue to do all that we can to support them in their spiritual journey. But what I wanted to say was that I will be calling the men's group and also those women in the church on Tuesday about 6 o'clock. I'm trying to have a place where we can visit and hang out with Lloyd-Jones for the time that he's going to be here on Tuesday. And pray to God we'll see him again. So let's hope that we can have a good gathering to send him off. Thank you. Amen. Other prayers? Through the week, folks, I thought about the the young people that came up the past couple weeks have come up as we did our benediction and they were on my mind. And so I want us to keep our young people in prayer, but not only the ones here that come before us, but all the young people out there, many of whom are in a wilderness walking in a fog, not just the seven and eight year olds, but the 18 and 19 year olds that are in a tough time and a tough way. Let us keep them in our prayers and if indeed we find ourselves in a position where the spirit leads us to cross paths with them, let us show them by the way we carry ourselves that there's another way and there's a better way to conduct their affairs. So let's keep them in prayer. Prayers, too, are requested for Esther Walton as he continues to battle cancer. For Brenda Brown, family and friends of, of Raz, for victims of violence in Kansas City and Gaza and an end to violence everywhere. Prayers for our young adult members who are away at college. Prayers for James's mother, Irma Webb. For the Richard Green family. Prayers for people recovering from surgical procedures and medical treatments. And also prayers for those who are facing surgery in the near future. Keep the ill and families uplifted and strengthened in faith. Because yes, indeed, each day is truly a gift. And thank you for all the prayers that were sent to me. Please stand up your back. Sister Marlea, please stand up. Are you able? You. She said, you said you're back. Amen. <laughs> On this first Sunday in Lent, let us once again close our eyes and bow our heads as we focus on Jesus' sacrifice and God's gifts. Let us examine our way. Let us burn those pieces of paper and throw them to the wind and allow God to touch us in special ways every step of the way in our faith journey. Once again, go before that throne of grace. Let us first meditate on the words of the psalmist in 
Psalm 25, verses 1 through 5. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me, make me to know your ways, O oh Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Let's pray together. Great God, on this first Sunday in Lent, open our hearts to you. Guide us in this time of worship today that we may give you all due honor, glory, and praise. Allow us not to focus singularly on our own sometimes selfish desires. But merciful and giving God, give us the courage, the strength, and the will to move in faith beyond and outside our, our comfort zones. Encourage and empower us that we may employ hospitality, offer ourselves to the lonely and the hurting, to bring food to the hungry, to clothe the naked, to be ever tolerant with those who look and smell and behave in ways that are alien to us. And God, kindle and rekindle in us the fire to seek, to espouse, to share, and to rejoice in the principles and the practice of peace and justice and joy about which our Lord Jesus taught and teaches us. Eternal God, walk with us as we strive to set aside pettiness and foolishness and the nonsense that too often are the hallmarks of a popular culture where anything goes unchecked, unrestrained, and unconstricted. Rather, may our love for you and for our siblings in Christ, no matter their condition, their status, or place in life, be as boundless and as unconditional and unrestrained as Jesus' love for us. Oh God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us this day as we ever seek to be your people. That indeed all may know we are Christians by our love for all people. In all time and in all spaces. humbly pray all these things in the name of our Savior and our liberator, Jesus, who is the Christ, along with the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, folks, and tell them that you love them. Do it down there? No? no? Okay. 
It is now a time for our offering to be presented. Now comes the time for us to offer our gifts to God for the life of this church and the world. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God as gratitude and praise. Return to God the offerings of our lives and gifts of the earth. For those who are present in the sanctuary, please prepare your offering now. For those worshiping online after the service, you may send your offering directly to College Hill, 1504 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton 45406. The online servant keeper app is not currently available. So until further notice, please either mail your donations to our church or bring them into worship. Regardless of how you give, we thank you for your faithfulness and support of this church and in thanksgiving to God. Lord, you are the source of every good and perfect gift, O oh God. Use these tithes and offering for your glory. Let your church be a spring whose water never fails, and let your people be repairers of the breach and restorers of streets to live in. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oímos ahora esas palabras de comisión. El Cristo resucitado dice a sus discípulos, por lo tanto, vayan y hagan discípulos de todas las naciones, bautizándolos en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Enseñen a los nuevos discípulos a obedecer todos los mandatos que les he dado. Y tengan por seguro esto, que estoy con ustedes siempre hasta el fin de los tiempos. Amén. We hear now this charge to us. The risen Christ says to his disciples, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey, obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you even to the end of the age. Amen. It's a long, hard journey that we are on, but the good news, the good news is we're not by ourselves. We got somebody who walks with us and talks with us and tells us that we are his very own. We have a hand on our shoulders 
every step of the way because truly the one that calls us to be about the business of love and peace is the one who sustains us and the one who illumines our path. And as we are on this road with Jesus to Calvary, let us focus on God's goodness and God's grace and God's mercy. Understanding, truly understanding that he did it for us. Each and every one of us. We are special in God's sight. As we go out from this place, let us reach out beyond ourselves, our own sometimes petty and feeble ways and embrace even those who have maybe yet to come to know and understand the Christ presence in their lives. In many instances, people have told me, I once knew the church. I once knew that God was in my life, but I turned my back, and I went a different way. But the good news that we take away from this place is that despite the things that we do, God never turns God's back on us. And so now may the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the peace and the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us today and forever tomorrow. And all of God's people said, Amen. Go with God, church. Go with God. Go with God. As you leave this place, go with God. God will direct your way. God will last and lead you. As you leave this place, go with God. Go with God. Go with God. As you Have a wonderful week, folks. Amen and amen.